Hey everybody, Sam back once again, and as you can tell, we're going to review this. The Nexus 5X. Well, let's do this. So, I don't know if you can tell, it is a bit of a different camera placement. It's a little bit higher this time. Uh, tell me what you think, if you like it, if you don't like it. And I'm going to do my video a little bit different than normal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run down the things that I like about the device and I don't like about it. I then tell you if I'd buy it, if it's definitely going to be a phone to purchase or not. And I'm not going to go into certain sections for this and sections for that. I could ramble for quite a while. So be prepared. We're going to talk about the things I don't like about it first of all. Then we're going to talk about the things that I do like about it. So I've got my trusty little uh, phone at the side here. And I've got a list of things. So there's quite a few things I don't like about the phone. And the first one is going to be that it feels cheap. And there's no getting around it. It doesn't feel like a premium device. Now, some people are going to say, but it's Sam, it's not a premium device. It is the kind of mid-range, dare I say it, mid-range kind of specifications, the way, it, you know, the way it's meant to be. It's only £300 in the UK. It's actually going to go up soon to the normal price, but currently you can still get it for £300. And to the person that says that, I understand that. But it still feels cheap up to something else, like an Honor 7. Now, I'm only saying that phone because I've got that phone to do a comparison with, and I'm gonna get, you're going to see that hopefully in the next couple of days. When you compare them like for like, the Honor 7 is a cheaper device in terms of you can go purchase it for cheaper, but it feels a lot more premium, this. This looks nice. That's something I will come to in a bit. I do like the look of the phone. It just it feels cheap. I don't know if it's the material, because the material's not, it doesn't feel cheap in terms of that, but it just, it doesn't feel substantial, it feels too light, I know it's thinking, what, too light? Yeah, it does feel a little bit too light, for my personal preference, I'm just not a fan of the way it does feel. Now, carrying on from the kind of like, the cheap kind of aspect of that, the vibration motor in this, it is, dare I say, it's pathetic, it's probably the worst if not one of the worst vibration motors I've ever had in a phone. It just feels awful. It sounds really tinny. It's not a good experience. I don't know what LG have done because in the Nexus 5, it was pretty decent. In this one, it just, I don't know, it sounds like it, it could be something from like, I don't know, some kind of Meccano set or something. It just, it's not a very good vibration motor. It does work and it does, you can feel it, but it just, it feels bad, it feels cheap, and I'm sorry, it, it just doesn't, it's not a good experience. Another thing I don't like about it is going to be the speakers, or should I say speaker. So as you can see at the front of it, it looks like you do get two of them. That's not the case in this phone. You do only get one of them, which is this one here. This is used as the earpiece, so the bottom one is a speaker. And it's kind of disappointing because I thought, yay, yeah, cool, we're going to get dual speakers, and obviously we know that you don't get them. The speaker quality is okay, but some of the latest phones, even on the bottom, an example, the Galaxy Note 5 that I've got, and even the S6 Edge that I'm using to uh, read this list off, it sounds better and it's a bottom kind of speaker here. So personally, it's not the not the worst speaker in the world. We're not talking like Nexus 4 speaker, which I always hated, but it's not the best in the world and it's something that I don't like about the phone. Again, personal preference here, I don't like the quality of it. It's not bad, but it's not fantastic. The next one is going to be the internal storage. Now, as you know, with the Nexus device, you can't expand it. It is very iPhone-esque in terms of no expandable storage. What you get out of the box is what you get. Do not buy a 16 gigabyte version of this phone. Did you hear me? Do not buy the 16 gigabyte version. You're going to regret it. Out of the box, you get just over 10 gigabytes. Unless you don't want to have a lot of stuff on your phone, 16 gig is going to be okay. But if you're thinking this device is going to last you for maybe a couple of years, get the 32 gigabyte version if you want this phone. If you want this kind of style, this compact, more of a compact style, I can't believe I'm saying a 5.2 inches compact. But if you want more, more like a smaller, a smaller phone in terms of today's standards, get the 32 gigabyte version. Do not buy 16 gigabyte version phones. So the next thing I'm not a massive fan about is the audio quality during when you're using the camera. Now, the video quality, we'll come to that in the, the good things, but the audio sounds very tinny. 
it's got no real kind of depth at all to it, which is a shame because on my LG devices in the past, such as the G2 and G3, the audio was always pretty crisp. It was all pretty one of the best points of that. On this one, don't know why, it just sounds very tinny. So the audio quality during the video playback or video recording, should I say, is just not great. Again, it's not the worst in the world, but we're talking £300 for a device. It is not a cheap, cheap phone. I expected better, and I unfortunately didn't get that. Another thing I'm not a massive fan of is the, camera, the actual camera processing times. Now, the overall performance, which we'll come to in the good thing, the things I do like, is very fast and kind of very speedy. The things I don't like about it, or the thing I don't like about it is the camera, is it seems to take a while for it to process. Now, it's generally only in the HDR plus mode. So I've turned that on now. So what we'll do is just bring in, and I'll just bring in a quick cable I've just got sat around. So as you can see there, if I take a picture of that, and then go into it, it's still processing the HDR plus, as they call it. I don't know why, it kind of annoys me a little bit. It should be instant. Now, I know it's rocking a Snapdragon 808 with two gigabytes of RAM. It's not the beastliest kind of processor on the market, but it just seems a little slow. Now, if I take it out of the HDR plus, so it's in auto, take it off there and then take the picture, go into it, it's fast. But when you use HDR auto mode or the HDR plus mode, it just takes, it seems to take forever. It's not, it's like two seconds or so. But I don't know, I, I like having instant access to my picture. And I don't know why that is. So maybe that can get updated in a software update. But if I try and take like another picture, as you can see, it's not the slowest. But when I use something like my Note 5, see if I can try and keep taking them. If I use like my Note 5, you can see it slows down. So when using the HDR plus mode, it's constantly kind of processed the HDR plus uh, the actual pictures. As you can see here, it's still processing previous ones. So now it's just getting to the final one. Now it's something that I I don't really want to accept. I don't want to expect on a on a, a new a brand new phone. It's just not something that I like. Again, it's all subjective. Whether you're going to think that oh, you don't care about that, you do care about it. But again, it's something that I don't like about the phone is that you can't do loads of quick snappy pictures when you use the HDR plus mode. I also keep forgetting the plus, but yeah, the plus mode. They don't know, do, apparently it's Google's own version of it, but yeah. So no, I don't like the fact that it's pretty laggy. Um, dare I say, it's not very laggy, it's just slow processing those pictures. So yeah. The one thing I don't like about it, and you're going to get confused in a bit, is the USB Type-C. So on the bottom of it, yes, it does rock USB Type-C. The reason I don't like it is because of the fact that I've got no other cables. I've got the one cable that came with this one. And I've got to use the charge that it got with it. So if I were to keep the phone, I'd have to go out, buy a new cable for it. I then kind of lose the option of doing the fast charging. I kind of wish they'd have done like the Nexus 6P, where you get two cables inside the box. So it gives you a bit of an option. With this one, you have to use the cable you get inside the box, unless you go out and buy some more cables. I know in the future it's going to be good. But for now, it's something that kind of pisses me off a little bit. So yeah, it's not the greatest thing in the world. And the final thing that I don't like about the phone is the ambient kind of mode, where you've probably seen it at the beginning of the video, is you kind of get like your little lock screen that gives you some options. So your phone's down, you're meant to pick it up or kind of tap it, and it's meant to come up with like the ambient mode. I think that's what they call it. And as you can see, it just doesn't work nine times out of 10. And then out of the blue, when you kind of shake your phone, sometimes you'll get it coming on. I don't know why it's there. Um, on the Motorola devices, even the Moto G 3rd Gen, it's fantastic. For some reason, on the Nexus device, or the Nexus 5X, it's just kind of piss poor. And yeah, I wish that it actually worked. I wish I had double tap to work as well, because it's a feature I like on my phones. But yep, yeah, unfortunately it doesn't. But it does have the fingerprint scanner, which we're going to come to in a minute, hopefully. So we're going to talk about the things that I do like about the phone. So I'm just going to get my list of them ones. So don't worry, it's not all doom and gloom. I know I've kind of spoke for quite a while about how much I don't like about it. But we're now going to talk about the things that I do like about it. And there's quite a lot of these as well. So number one, software updates. You're always going to be on the latest version of Android when you're rocking a Nexus device. Well, unless this kind of like loose support for like a Galaxy Nexus. But I digress. <laughs> Majority of the devices are still going to get updates for quite a few years to come. 
that's always a plus point. Definitely winning my res in that respect there. I love it. It's like think of it as like the the i the iPhone version of an Android phone. It's not, but it kind of like is because you're always getting the up to date security patches, the new software, the new features, etc. That's definitely a win for me. The overall performance on the phone, it is just fast. Um, from just kind of like going you know, into applications, doing things, you know, as example, just going up and down with a gas in here. So an example is going to Chrome, you're going to something else, you go to Twitter, you're going to something else, going to your camera, you got something else, going to your messages, you go to your telephone. Your overall performance from flicking one to the other, it is very, very fast. So an example, let's see if I go back to Chrome or something like that. As you can see, it was go back, go back into it, go back into Messenger. Um, let's say I want to go back into Drive. It, the overall performance in terms of the phone it is very, very fast. I've actually done a software reset, by the way, because it's going back. But yeah, um, the overall performance, it is very, very fast. You'll be very happy with the overall performance. There's not really any lag. To say it's only got two gigabytes of RAM, there's pretty much no lag, which is definitely a plus, plus point. If you're spending £300 on a phone, you don't want it to be lagging after a day or two, do you? So apart from the camera, everything else is very, very snappy. Um, I've not been able to make it lag. I've opened up quite a lot of applications. I've done as much as I can to try and make it lag. It is very, very hard to make this phone lag, which again, is definitely a plus point. Now let's talk about the camera quality. It's great. It's not the best on the market. I still believe the Galaxy Note 5, S6, S6 Edge, etc. I still think they're number one. That's the number one camera on the market for me. This comes a very close second with the LG G4. I'd probably give the G4 a slight advantage over it, purely for the fact it's got optical image stabilization. This doesn't have that, which I guess you could put in my kind of a dot like, but I've not missed it. The camera in terms of taking pictures, very, very crisp, very, very kind of on point. The laser auto focus on the back of it definitely works when it's in low light. And overall, it is the best camera you can get on a Nexus device to date. Google finally delivered, and boy did they deliver. It's about time in all honesty, but yeah, the camera is definitely a win. It is definitely a go in terms of that one there. I think the camera is fantastic. Let's talk about the battery life. And as you can tell, we're in the good section. So yes, the battery life on this phone is pretty damn good. So on the phone, it's got a new feature which is called Doze Mode. Now, I'm going to try and do a video just talking about Doze. It um, won't be on this phone in particular, but I'll tell you what Doze actually is in a future video. Yeah, I'll go into more depth. But effectively what it does is, if you're not using your phone, it puts it into like a dozy kind of sleep mode. So it saves your battery life. It definitely works on this device. I think the battery inside is 2700 milliamp or maybe 2750 milliamp. So it's not the biggest battery, but it's only got a 1080p display. Um, so it's not going to need the kind of like the most powerful of the powerful batteries to rock it and it's running the snapdragon 808 again not the fastest on the market so it shouldn't need that much battery but i get a solid day out of it and that's probably with a screen on time of around four and a half to five hours it depends on which day you're on and depends what kind of network signal is when i first got it i was getting maybe three hours and i was thinking oh here we go another nexus device and over the first week and a bit it got better and it got better and my maximum was probably about five or four and a half to five hours I'd say probably an average maybe three and a half to four as like an average, but my best battery life was around four and a half to five hours. So I think that's acceptable. I think it's very acceptable. Now, if you don't use the phone at all and you put it on the side, that's when doze mode will kick in and you'll get even better battery life. I mean, the let's say the four and a half to five hours was during like a, um, about 16 hour work day. So I think that's pretty acceptable. Like in fact, I think that's very acceptable. Definitely for a Nexus device, it's very acceptable anyway. Because in the past, again, they've never been the best. So, I've talked about how I don't like the USB Type-C. It's also in my like section. You're thinking, what? I like the fact it's future-proofed. I like the fact that it's there. And so, in the future, if I get another device, they're all going to come with this one going forward. So, you've got it. You know, you might as well get into the ecosystem now, having these kind of cables lying around. And you're, set for, you know, you're going to be set for the next next... 10 years or so, maybe longer, who knows. So it's definitely a plus point in terms of the future and you know, kind of going forward. It's just the fact I don't like having to carry the cable around with me. But apart from that, I do like the fact it's there. And jumping into the next section at the same point as that, this bad boy is stupidly fast at charging. 
Now, when I say stupidly fast, it's probably faster than my um, Note 5. It's kind of like it gets down to the bottom, plug it in within about an hour, boom, you are rock and roll. There we go, that's the ambient mode. If you know what I'm talking about. It just doesn't work half the time. But yeah, sorry, let's go back. Go back to in terms of the super fast charging. It is stupidly fast at charging. Stupidly is a good thing, by the way. So yeah, um, let's say you you know you come home, you're going to be going out after half an hour, plug it in, you're going to top your battery up by like, what, 30% or something? You'll be going to be very surprised at how quick this bad boy is at charging the actual phone. So yeah, the fast charging in the phone, definitely a win for me. I think it is absolutely fantastic. Let's talk about this. The fingerprint scanner. It is fan blooming tastic. I've probably used that word a few times today. They're fantastic. It is very, very fast. Again, it is stupidly fast. So you don't even have to turn the power button on. You just tap it and it unlocks the phone for you. Now, it's hard to kind of demonstrate how fast it actually is because I've not got another camera kind of set up. But I'll tell you when I'm about to touch it. So in, let's say now. I'll just do it and it goes straight on. So again, now. You can probably hear, maybe hear it vibrate a little bit. When it vibrates, that's when you pretty much touch it. And it's going, yep, got your job done, opened up. This, to me, is faster than the iPhone 6S and the 6S Plus. My personal kind of using both. Now, I've not used an iPhone 6S or a 6S Plus as a daily driver. I've just played with it, kind of played with one for a couple of hours at a time. And this one, to again, for me, is faster. It just kind of tap it and boom you straight in. Again, you can kind of can it can try and show you again. So you kind of put your finger on. By the time you turn it over, you're unlocked and you're rocking and rolling, ready to go. It is absolutely crazy fast. And the setup, which I did, you only have to tap it six times. But every time you touch it after that, it learns more about your fingerprint. So it's stupidly fast to set up, and then it's stupidly fast to use it on a regular basis. Again, definitely a plus point for me. So let's talk about that color. I love it. <laughs> it's one of those things. I, when I ordered it, I thought, I'm going to get the blue one because not many people are getting the blue. I thought, yeah, ice colour, sorry, the ice. It's kind of an eggshell, kind of bluey, kind of green. I think it looks absolutely fantastic in terms of the design and the look of it. I love the way it looks. And in person, it looks it looks blooming lovely. Now, on camera, it looks a little kind of more huey, I suppose. So definitely go check one out. If you know someone that's getting one, check out the colour of this one before you order yours. Don't buy the white one, maybe buy the black one, but this one, I think looks absolutely awesome. And if it was me, not as many people are going to get this one as they're going to get the other colours. So I would definitely get this one if I was you. Anyway, that again, that would be my personal choice if I could. And it's not a huge device. So yeah, I mean, you're getting these new badass, big ass devices like the Note 5, the Nexus 6P, you name it, the iPhone 5S, 5S, iPhone 6S Plus, all these massive devices. This is a 5.2 inch display, 1080p. It's not the smallest on the market. It's not, but I'm not going to say it's a compact phone, but in terms of one handed usability, you can use it by one hand. So again, kind of tap it, kind of get from one side to the other. You can use it one hand. You have a bit of trouble getting to the top, but in terms of holding it, it feels nice in the hand. It's very comfortable to hold in the hand. Again, it feels a little cheap, a little, I don't know, a little hollow, but. It feels nice when you do hold it in terms of the size of it. It's definitely a plus point for me. And that's another reason why I would probably buy this phone over not buying it. It's purely for the fact that it is a very, very nice feeling phone in the hand for the size. It's a shame it just feels kind of very, I don't know if you can hear it. It feels very, very cheap and a bit, again, very, I'm underwhelmed by the build kind of like the build in terms of the quality, but it's nice size. There we go, finally got it out. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that makes a bit more sense. So that's pretty much it for the things that I don't like and the things that I do like. Again, it's kind of like lopsided. There's, there's a lot of things I don't. There's quite a lot of things I do like about it. I mean, if there's any specific questions you want to know about it that I've not said in the video, I've probably talked a little bit too long. You may have even turned off by now, but if you've not turned off, leave me a comment down below saying Nexus... SJP, hashtag Nexus SJP, I don't know, <laughs> but if you're not enough, I do appreciate it, the thing I didn't say about the things I do like and the things I don't like, and something I kind of expect from a phone, the call quality in terms of the earpiece, it is very good, um, it's solid, it's not the best in the world, it's not the worst in the world, it's a phone, it does what it should do, gets a good signal, never had any problems, can't really complain about it, and obviously the front facing camera, which is the 5 megapixel, it's good, 
it's not going to win any awards, but it's definitely a solid performer. And the overall phone itself is a very nice phone. Again, not um, it's kind of like the you probably kind of should call this the Nexus 5X. Not the best phone in the world. I might actually do that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if you're looking for a Nexus device, you don't want to splash out for the Nexus 6P and you've only got £300 to spend on a phone and you're thinking, I want a Nexus device, then this is the only one to get. Again, it's 16 gigabyte for the £300. It is going to increase soon with Carphone Warehouse. So if you are going to buy it, buy it soon. Personally, I wouldn't purchase, I wouldn't purchase one of these. I am actually going to be returning this one. Yeah, I don't return many phones. And it's for the fact that I don't really see where it fits within the kind of phones that I want. If this was a Nexus 6P, but this size, but the 6P kind of build quality in the design, I would definitely keep it. But it's just, it's not the phone for me. So in terms of what is it an Insta buy, is it not a buy? Unfortunately, this one, for me, it's a no buy for me personally. But, and this is a big but. If you want a clean Android experience, something that's going to get future updates and it's not £600, get an Nexus 5X. You won't be disappointed with the overall performance. Very good camera, amazing fingerprint scanner, and it's a nice 1080p display as well. So all in all, I wouldn't buy it, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't buy it. It's all down to your personal preference. You can decide on that one. What do you think? Is this kind of style video more of what you're looking for? I've kind of to go into a bit more depth of things that I do like, things that I don't like, just to kind of give you a list of what I do, what I don't, and we'll go from there. So as always, let me know in the comments down below if you like this type of video, if you like this kind of style, or do you want me to keep it short and simple and just kind of go through the quick things, five minute video, job done, here we go. You can hit me up on Twitter, at Sam J. Pullen. Yes, I'm on the Twitter, the Twitter sphere, Twitter's verse, whatever it might be. I'm on Instagram, which is, again is at Sam J. Pullen. And guess what? Facebook as well is facebook.com slash Sam J. Pullen. Probably a bit of a theme going on here. Any social network or anything you can think about, I am at Sam J. Pullen. Even Snapchat. Yep, yeah, even Snapchat. Who would have thought, yeah? So, yeah, all the links are down below. If you're doing jammy videos and you're thinking, I, I kind of like this style of video and I appreciate, you know, kind of my take on it, then hit the like button. Again, it is very much appreciated and it very it does help a hell of a lot. And subscribe. Why? Because it's free. Yee. <laughs> I don't know what I did, but I did it. Anyway, people, I appreciate you watching. Again, if you've got any questions at all, you can hit me up in the comments down below. And again, I've so sort of spoke about all the kind of made all the options you can do to contact me. As you can tell, I'm rambling a bit. I've been speaking for quite a while. And hopefully, you'll stick around for more reviews. And you'll see me in my next one. <laughs> Cheers, everyone.